Good afternoon students, this is Mr. Verzat, and today I'm going to demonstrate just another pre-drawing exercise finished all the way to completion here. Uh, right now what I'm doing is I'm showing you which hand hold to use. There's the overhand and the detail hold. And in the lower corner I've got a picture of the image that I'm using, and I'm also coloring that with uh, digitally with red lines to show you exactly what I'm looking at. And uh, so yeah, so you've got two images here to look at. One, what I'm drawing, and then two, what's being drawn up. That'll go away a little bit. So right now I'm looking at the ear. And I'm just pre-drawing that out in, as the basic ovals. Now remember, when you pre-draw something that you're looking at, one of the most important things to remember is to measure your form against itself. So this part of the kitten's face that I'm drawing right here, I'm thinking, okay, how many of those little areas could I stack on top of itself to fit inside of that head that I drew. That'll help ensure that I've drawn it correctly and accurately. And I'm just using basic circles to kind of plot out where the different body parts are. Uh, at this point I'm trying to figure out how to catch the curve of the uh, left side of the kitten's body. But uh, and I'm also planning on how big to make the oval. So if you look at the picture here I drew a circle over the kitten's head in red and I'm trying to think okay how many of those heads would I stack on top of each other before it gets to the bottom of the kitten's little white belly and I saw about two heads and so right now this oval that I'm drawing is about two heads in height and we're just doing basic forms here basic shapes right now I'm trying to figure out the distance from the head all the way to the bottom of the feet and it appears to be a, just a hair more, maybe two and a half, two and three quarter heads in height here. You can actually see me measuring it out on paper. So always measure your form against itself. I'm using a pre-drawing hold. That helps me to see where I'm going when, as I draw, and it also helps me to uh, keep my lines light so that when I end up shading, it'll all disappear and go away. And here I am plotting out just where the feet are, and finally, the tail. Okay, and we're speeding it up now. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm going in and refining my pre-drawing line, so it looks a little bit more like the forms that they're intended to look like. So I'm still doing it at a pressure 1, about a 1.5, and I'm using a detail hold now. Now I'm going into the facial features. One thing I've done since I've had a lot of practice at this is um, I do break from the rule in class on layering where you start with your lightest values first. So what I like to do sometimes is I go and find the darkest part of the picture and I do that first. That gives me a measuring rod in a sense as to for me to know how dark my values are. And so now I'm going in and I'm layering in my lightest values, getting some fur, I'm, I'm blocking in my shadows. And, and go into the eyes here. And the shading technique that I used is hatching. I didn't use cross hatching, nothing. All of this is individual strokes. And uh, the secret is, is an advanced technique called directional hatching. You hatch the direction that the fur is going. Also to note, uh, the shading under the chin here, the way I define that part of the kitten's face is I used implied line. I drew with the shadows. That's how I did it. You use your dark areas to define the other surfaces that you want. Uh, now I'm just going in, I'm layering light values, I'm hatching the direction I believe the fur was going, and then going and adding a second pass and a third pass and a fourth pass over it to add more layers and more value. Constantly going in to make some areas darker to increase the contrast. You'll see also with the uh, kitten's tummy here on the very bottom, I'm going to define that soft edge uh, by drawing the dark shadow in between the cat's legs. And that, once again, using implied line. You define an area by the other values. So it was a light white tummy. I drew it with a, against a dark thing, and that helped it really stand out. Now, I'm not going to finish this image. This is just another example of the process that it goes through. Notice there's no blending stump. All the blending is done using the pencil. It gives it energy, gives it life. And if you can master this when you use a blending stick, your drawing will be all the stronger. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in class.